Father, I thank you for this moment, this privilege that we have. Um, Father, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, to help us to be transparent. Help us to remove the blinders. Help us to remove the facade. Help us to remove uh, the perfection um, or maybe the, the mask of perfection. And help us to get down to the root, to the core of our feelings, our emotions, our intellect, and everything that works away in the soul. Father, I thank you that you'll speak to us tonight. Maybe somebody is challenged uh, tonight, God, but I thank you that you have a right now word that I believe uh, that you'll be able to gird them up, that you'll be able to strengthen them, that you'll be able to strengthen their foundation, that somebody will leave here tonight stronger than what they came in. God, and I thank you that you'll open up our ears to hear your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If y'all ready to go, say, let's go. If you're ready to go in the comments, say, let's go. I need to know who I got with me tonight because we're about to run with it. Look, <clears throat> um, let's let, let's be honest and let's pull back some of the let's peel back some of the covers. Um, this week has been, uh, I believe, for a lot of people, an emotional roller coaster, um, particularly uh, for the African-American community um, dealing with. Uh, the trial of George Floyd um, and then right on the heels of the celebration um, dealing with not just one, but even another today, um, two African-Americans uh, shot down by officers in two separate occasions. Um, look, we're going to talk about this tonight. And I see y'all in the comments saying, let's go. I know y'all ready. Um, listen, whether it's this situation, uh, whether it is racial tensions or um, civil injustices, um, whether it's racism, uh, whether it's finance, whether it's your job, whether it is um, what's going on in your body, whether it's sickness, whether it's health, um, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's your kids, whether it's trying to get them back in school, um, if it is your job, if it's your family, if it's your friends, if it's your house, if it's your bills, if it's your car, um, if it's your city, if it's your country, whatever it is, Y'all, we deal with feelings. We deal with emotions. And I'm going to try my best not to get too far ahead of myself, but these are things that we have to deal with. These are This is something that God created on the inside of us. This is something that God has given us. And so it is our job to learn how to manage and to navigate those feelings within the confines of our salvation. Um, once we get saved, he doesn't take away our feelings. I'm going to say it again. Once you get saved, he does not take away your feelings. He does not take away your emotions. He does not take away your intellect. He does not take away your will power or even, even, even your will to be able to do the things that you desire to do. He doesn't take it away. He keeps it right there. And it's our job to learn how to navigate these things. I want to show you something in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 to grab my attention. In 2 Corinthians, uh, in, yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, look. Um, I want to be, I want to be completely honest with you guys tonight. Um, y'all, man, I'm listening. Y'all in the right place tonight. Um, I never want people to get the impression of me and I hope no other pastor would, um, or even leader for that matter, uh, for people to look at you and, 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 and have this perception of you, um, that you are flawless, that you are perfect, um, that you don't experience hurt or pain, um, that you don't go through the roller coaster of emotions as well. I'm not talking about getting too, too high. I'm not talking about getting too, too low, but even somewhere in the middle, sometimes it's still a wave of emotions, right? Um, because sometimes we look at people on platforms. Y'all be patient with me tonight because I'm, I'm I, I feel like I'm gonna really help us out tonight. Notice I said us. Um, I feel like you can look at people on platforms and you, 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 you gather or you put together this idea of what you think them to be, especially, and I know a few of you are streaming tonight, especially for those of you who are streaming and you're always the strong friend, always the strong family member. Like I told you a couple of weeks ago, always having a word in and out of season, Right. Always being that encourager, always being that voice of reason, always being that conviction when you're in the room, always being the person that is that carrier of the anointing and carrier of God's glory. And so when you show up, people even around you, they expect things to change because you are there. 
I'm talking to y'all tonight, that person, right? Um, and so oftentimes, man, when you're that person, you're not allowed to show weakness. Um, you're not allowed to, 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 to show emotions. You're not allowed to have feelings um, because uh, as some of us have been taught coming up that it's a sign of weakness to cry, that it's a sign of weakness uh, to be angry or to be upset or to be frustrated. Let me show y'all, man. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're dealing with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Paul, uh, arguably one of the greatest apostles. Um, this man, Paul, was full of wisdom. This man was full of charisma. This man was full of passion. And this man in chapter 12 combs through some of what we're talking about here tonight. Listen up. Follow me on this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, this is what it says. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man of Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether in the body I do not know, God knows such a one who was caught up in the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of body, I don't know how he was caught up in paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Y'all follow me on this. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. Let me tie this together before we go to the next verse. It's going to bring everything together, what I'm talking about here tonight. What he's saying is, I have reason to boast. I very well could boast, but I will not boast in myself, but I'll boast in my infirmities. Listen, let me set this up before we read any further. Essentially, what, what, what he's saying is, and at least how it pertains to our emotions and our feelings, what he's saying is, I could present myself as that person who is flawless, right? I could boast as the person who's always encouraging, right? I could, have, I could take pride in the fact that I always have a word in and out of season, and I'm always that strong friend for everybody else. I could boast in that fact if I desire to, if I wanted to. But what he's saying right here is that it would be foolish Doubtless, it would not be profitable is what he says in verse one. It would not be profitable for me to boast. Essentially, he's saying I'm smarter than that. I can only burst, uh, boast in my infirmities. This is what it says. If we keep on reading, I know this is going to help you all tonight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse seven, he goes on to say this. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Y'all listen, before I go any further, I got to keep on stopping because this thing keep hitting me. Listen, he says, unless I be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. He's saying that I believe that if I keep at it, if I, if I take pride in the things that God is using me to do, if I begin to boast in always having a word in and out of season, if I begin to start filling myself a little bit, um, if, I, I, if I begin to carry myself like I am unimpacted by the world's current affairs, right? Y'all can be honest, right? We don't have to be that super deep person that's like the pandemic didn't impact me. It wasn't hard. It was easy. Um, or, or with sickness and, and, and pain, you know, even though we deal with it, hey, you know, you just lost a loved one. Get over it. Right. You know, what I mean, you, if you're going to see him in heaven, then then you shouldn't have to cry about it. Or, or when somebody's left in a pool of blood on the street, you know, telling people, all right, you know, well, you know, we, we just need to get past this. You know, it, it, it happens and we just need to work through it. Um, we, we just need to pray. We just need to come together. We just need to repent. And you can sound very spiritual and you can have people look at you like, Wow, why is it that they're, ne they're never impacted? Why is it that they're never emotional? Why is it that they never deal with pain? And what Paul is saying is that, lest I be exalted, unless I trick you or manipulate you or, or to have you believe the lie that I'm perfect and that I have it together, I won't boast in this, but instead I'll boast in my infirmities. I boast in the fact that I get emotional too. I hope y'all hear me tonight. He's saying, I boast in the fact that I have feelings too. He's saying, I, I, I boast in the fact that, yeah, that hurt me too. One of the greatest testimonies, one of the greatest uh, influences, um, one of the greatest uh, bits of encouragement that you can give somebody who is dealing with something or going through something heavy 
Um, it's two words. Me too. Me too. I'm not asking you to lie. I'm not asking you to make up no stories. I'm talking about telling them and sharing with them. Again, I say it all the time, your transformation story. Even if it's not something that you're currently battling with, something that God has brought you through at a, uh, where you were at a point where you felt the same way. Look, y'all, this is no judgment, man. I'm scrolling down my timeline and I'm seeing all sorts of, uh, of can I call it schizophrenia, where people are all over the place. And you can scroll down and just experience the highs and lows of what everybody is feeling just by reading what everybody is going through. When you turn on the news, you're experiencing the highs and lows. It's like a, a good story that makes you feel bubbly on the inside. And then it's a story about drama. And then it's a story about um, a, a, a good citizen. And then it's a story about somebody left dead in the middle of the street. And, and you're on these highs and lows. And you deal with these emotions. You deal with these feelings. But feeling like I'm not allowed to have this or feel this or experience this because I'm supposed to be spiritual. I hope y'all getting some, something from this tonight. This is what Paul says. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure. Let me stop there again. He says, above measure, above the measure of grace that has been given to me to be able to operate in the gift that God has given me. Right. He's given me a certain grace to be able to operate. And unless if I if I boast, if I boast in how good I am, then I'll exceed the measure of grace that I have to be able to be sustained on this level. Man, God, I'm preaching good, y'all. He's saying, unless I be exalted above the measure, measure, he's referring to this measure of grace. Unless I be exalted above this measure, let me go ahead and humble myself. Let me go ahead and reveal uh, some of my flaws. Let me go ahead and be transparent before you and say, guess what? I can't boast in my strength. I need to actually boast in my infirmities because I deal with the same thing that you deal with. The only difference is this. Oh, my God. If you keep on reading, this is what it says. And it says in verse eight concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart. I don't know about y'all, <clears throat> um, but the last year, I mean, we've experienced racial tension before. Um, we've re we've experienced civil unrest before. Um, some of y'all personally have even experienced racism before. Um, our country has sent pa pandemics, but for some of us, this might be our first pandemic. For all of us, this is the 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 most uh, has been the most detrimental, right? So you're dealing with all of these things and trying to handle and, and, and trying to balance and trying to juggle everything all at the same time. But yet afraid to acknowledge the fact that you may not have it all together. Or it's been times where you broke and cried because you didn't understand. Or maybe you were praying for somebody else to get healed and didn't seem like the prayers was going through and you was about to have a panic attack. Or you didn't know how long the country was going to be shut down. And so you felt like you were just about to lose your mind. But for us to be able to address and acknowledge what we're experiencing and what we're going through. It does not mean it does not make you any less of a believer. It doesn't mean that you have any less faith in God and his power. What it means is that you're human. Is that you're human. In this, we find that Paul, he asked God three times to remove this thing. God, I find myself keep getting emotional about this. God, I keep finding myself getting frustrated about this. I keep finding myself getting emotional about this. God, I keep getting angry every single time it happens. Is this something that I just need to push over under a rug because this is not the Christian or the godly or the spiritual thing to do for me to be angry, for me to be frustrated, for me to be passionate, for, for, for me to be emotional, for me to be in my feelings? Is this not the Christian or the spiritual thing to do? And Paul asked God three separate times. He says, God, I would that you would remove this thing that I feel like is hindering me and hindering my progress. God, I'm trying my best to be spiritual. I'm trying my best to walk this Christian life. I'm trying my best to be the best believer that I can possibly be. But this thing just keeps on hindering me. Have you ever been praying about something? You're like, God, there's this stronghold over my life. And if you could just break it, then I can worship you freely. 
God, if you could just deliver me from this one area, then I promise you I would be able to serve you with, with all liberation and there will be nothing inhibiting me and holding me back. God, if you could just do this one thing in my life, if you could just move this one mountain in my life, God, then I'm telling you, man, I would be so free emotionally and I'd be able to live this spiritual life three times. God, I don't like this part of me. God, I don't like this side of me. I don't like it when I'm upset. I don't like it when I'm angry. I don't like it when I lash out. And this is what God does. It says, and he said to me, this is God speaking, red, red, red letters, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. This goes back to what Paul was talking about when he said, lest I be exalted above this measure, right? A measure of grace that I've given you. That is my sufficiency. That is your sufficiency. And if you operate within this sphere of grace that I've given you, within this measure of grace that, I, that I've given you, then you don't need anything to be removed in order for you to have strength in this situation where you feel like you're weak. What he's saying is in my weakness, I am strong, not because I'm boasting, not because I'm prideful, not because I'm so good, but because his grace has compensated for where I lack. Somebody say at home or put in the comments, his grace makes up the difference. His grace makes up the difference. He's given us a measure of grace to be able to account for, to be able to balance out, to be able to make up the difference for, to be able to give you smooth transitions for the areas in your life that you feel like are hindering you. Yeah, but Pastor Ty, you don't understand what I'm dealing with right now. I don't think this is a God thing. It just doesn't seem like God that God would let this happen. This doesn't seem like a God thing that he would allow me to experience this. It doesn't seem like a God thing that he would allow me to lose this or allow this situation to be broken or allow this relationship to be lost. It doesn't sound like a God thing, Pastor Ty. Interesting. Because in the first right before that, in verse 7, after it says, lest I be exalted above the measure by the abundance of the revelations... He says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. Because if you keep reading, it says a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I be exalted above measure. I hope y'all caught that just now. So he was being tempted by Satan to buffet his flesh. It didn't say that he was being tempted by God. I want to make that very clear. I'll come back to that. It says that he was being tempted by Satan. All right, but Pastor Ty, this is not of God. This is something that I believe that Satan is working in my life. And how many times have you in your life been so quick to rebuke what you thought was Satan, but then to later find out as you read in this verse, it says, he, uh, it says, the messenger of Satan above me, lest I be exalted above measure. How is it that he's saying, lest I be exalted above measure again? He says it in verse seven, and then he says it again in verse eight. After he says that Satan is the one that's tempting me with this. He acknowledges the fact that even though this is an attack. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. He acknowledges the fact that even though this is an attack, even though this doesn't sound like God, even though this doesn't look like God, even though I don't feel like this might be God's perfect will for my life, even though this doesn't completely line up to what I know about God in my life. He's saying that this was given to me. As a buffet to my flesh, lest I be exalted above measure. This is happening so I don't lose myself in pride. This is happening so I don't become uh, too egotistic. This is happening to keep me within that measure of grace that God has given me to be able to fully function in the gift and the anointing that he has placed on my life. My God, I hope y'all hear this tonight. He said that the storm was placed in my flesh. He acknowledges it. He says, all right, God, I don't feel like this is you, but man, God, I see how you're using this for your glory. Y'all hear me tonight. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are and called, right? This, this is where this, this verse ties into all of this. He says, this situation does not feel good. 
This situation does not look good. This situation does not sound good. Emotionally, I'm a wreck. In my feelings, I'm all in the center of it. And what he's saying is, I see that maybe this doesn't look like God, but I see that I see the God print all over this. I see that what I thought was a limitation actually was a barrier to protect me in order to keep me within God's measure of grace that he has assigned to my life. Because if you ever get outside of that measure of grace of God for your life, he is no longer obligated to keep you outside of that grace. Oh my God. He is not obligated to keep you outside of that measure of of grace that he has given you. So so in the meantime, while you're being while you're banging on the walls, while you're hitting the ceilings, while you're trying to bust out of what you think is an attack on your life, God is saying, like, no, 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 no. I, I need to keep you right here. I need to keep you right here. Because once you start feeling like you're too spiritual to be emotional, once you start feeling like you're too spiritual to have feelings, once you start feeling like you're too spiritual to be able to connect with somebody who's on a lower level, I can't help you then. Then you'll be boasting in your own strength. Can God still speak to you? Can God still use you to encourage the person that you don't feel like deserves encouragement? Oh, my God, this is going to hurt y'all. Can you pray for the mass shooter? That shoots up a, 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 a school. A hotel. A restaurant. A mall. And the police didn't kill him. Can you pray for him? Can you pray for his family who didn't have anything to do with it, but they're still dealing with the repercussions? They're still getting hate mail. People are lined up around their houses trying to burn their houses down because they're connected to the person that just killed all these people. Oh, my man. Listen, I, I know I probably lost some of y'all on that one. Listen to me very loud and clear. I am the I am a huge advocate for justice. But this is what I'm saying. He has given you a measure of grace. And if you operate outside of that measure of what you think, oh, this ain't the will of God. I don't need to pray for evil people. I don't need to love the person that doesn't love me back. Right. Um, God, I love your creation, but I don't love your creatures. God, I love you, but I don't love your people. Right. He's saying I've given you a measure of grace and the measure of grace that I've given you is sufficient for what I've called you to do. Which also means that it's insufficient outside of that measure of grace. I hope that makes sense to you all tonight. He's saying that my grace is insufficient. My grace is on lock. My grace is vexed. My grace hits a stalemate. My grace does not work and does not operate outside of the measure that I've given you it to you for. Let me help you understand what grace is. Grace is um, um, it's unmerited favor. I'm sure you have heard this before. Unmerited meaning undeserved. I did not work for this favor. It is it is undeserved kindness. It is God being good to us just because he's good. Not because we did anything to deserve it. This is not something that we could try to work up. Um, that we could try to preach up, that we could try to be such good disciples and stewards and Christians and believers. And so, man, God, God has just chosen to give me his grace because I'm so good. No, you got his grace before you even formed in your mother's womb. Listen, grace is merciful kindness. All right, it's one thing to show mercy, but you can still have mercy and treat somebody bad. I hope y'all listening tonight. You can still have mercy. You can say, man, you know what? I want to hurt you, but you know what? I'm going to forgive you this time. But then after you forgive them, you still don't want to be around them. After you forgive them, you, tr you still don't treat them nicely. After you forgive them, you're still not kind to them. After you forgive them, you still won't do anything for them. His grace is his merciful kindness. Not only do I forgive you, but now I'm going to be kind to you as if it never happened. I need to help somebody tonight. I didn't say that you trust them as if nothing ever happened, but I'm saying that you're being kind. His merciful kindness. This is what he said. Oh, this one, this one, this, this is probably my favorite definition of grace. It says exerting holy influence upon the soul, exerting holy influence over the soul. God's grace is him exerting his holy influence. Him saying, hey, I know how you feel. I know what you're thinking. 
I know you're emotional. I know what you're going through. I know you're frustrated. I know you're angry. I know you want to fly off the handle, but let me exert. Let me exert my influence. Let me inject my holiness into your situation. I know this is not something that you would take willingly. This is not just a pill that you can pop in and it's comfortable. I need to inject this into you. I need to exert this into you, almost sometimes even by force. This is something I need flowing in your veins. He's saying, let me, in, let me exert my influence. Let me inject my influence into your emotions, into your feelings, so that and for the purpose of you maintaining your spiritual and your Christian walk. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. It's not just him exerting his holy influence. It's not just him injecting his holiness into your soul and into your emotions and your intellect and your feelings, but it's for a purpose. It's for a reason. And that purpose is for you to be sustained as a believer because that's your measure. That's your measure of grace that he has given you. It's the measure of grace that he has given you. Your sufficiency, your sufficiency, this, 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 this is your barriers, not your limitations, but your protection. This is not your limitation, but it is your protection because outside of that grace, you are no longer protected. Jesus, help us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God's grace, God's grace. God's grace also makes the gospel attractive. It is, it is, you ever heard somebody say, man, you just got a, a grace about, you have a grace with words. You have, you, you have a grace, uh, you know, with dealing with people. You have a grace in, 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 in dealing with that, that gift of that talent. It means that it comes smoothly, that it comes easy, that when you do it, it, it comes in a way that is presentable, that makes it attractive and appealing to all those who see and all those who hear it. What he's saying is, as long as you operate within the confines of the measure of grace that I have given you, within that measure of grace also includes your feelings and your emotions and your soul. But what he's saying is, my grace is injecting, is exerting my holy nature, right? It's exerting my holy standards. It is inserting the spirit of God into your feelings to override how you feel. So that now you're with that same grace, with that same measure of grace that you've been given, given even to deal with your own emotions. Now you're able to walk through and to help people with their own emotions and present it in a way that makes sense. You're able to present it to people. You're able to encourage people in a way where it looks like you don't have emotions at all. You're able to present it in a way where it seems so sweatless and so easy that they're looking at you like, how is it that you're not phased by this? How, how is it that you're so eloquent while everybody else is a wreck? How is it that you're Ill, still able to sustain or maintain a smile when everybody else is angry and frustrated? Why is it that you always, here it goes again, always able to have a word in and out of season while we're going through so many seasons of drought? How is it that you're able to maintain that? It's because you're, you're, you're within that measure of grace. You're not boasting in your ability, but you're boasting in your infirmities. You're boasting in the fact that I am a complete wreck without the spirit of God, without the hand of God, without the grace of God. I would fall flat on my face. And in that weakness, in that admission of insufficiency, he then says, now my grace can be your sufficiency. Now my grace can make up the difference in the area that you've admitted you can't do by yourself. And so then when you're able to minister to and encourage and, and build up and empower other people, it comes out as if you're perfect. It comes out as if you'll never deal with nothing. It comes out as if you're, 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 you're unshaken, unmovable, that nothing ever touches you. But then that's an opportunity for you to share. Look, I'm just like you. I'm dealing with the same emotions you're dealing with. But maybe the only difference is that I boast in my weakness. My God, I boast in my insufficiencies. I, I boast in my flaws. Let me finish on this note right here. because I, I believe that I've said a lot of what God has given me to say tonight. Listen, um, there, there, all right, how can I say it? Um, it took me a while to get into social media and my wife begged me for a long time. 
it took me a while to get into it because I just wasn't big on promoting yourself. I wasn't, I wasn't big on look at me. I wasn't big on posting a lot of pictures. She knows it, it was hard for me even to get into vlogging because I didn't want everybody in our business. I didn't want everybody in our house. I didn't want everybody to, you know, uh, you know, have an insight to my kids and, 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 and how we act and how we, um, and, and how we engage with each other. I, 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 I just wanted, I wanted some, that privacy, right? Um, I, I've just never been really big with, with the social media platform. Um, and then she encouraged me, uh, she inspired me and she said, Hey, you have to recognize your sphere of influence and there are people out there that need what you have. And so essentially you have to almost get, get over <laughs> yourself, g uh, go beyond how you feel and what you think, go be, get beyond, um, uh, the things that you don't like, right. For the greater good, which is to be able to be a blessing to somebody else who might need it. Right. Here's the thing. I found so many flaws in myself. I said, man, but you know, I, I don't always say the right things. And sometimes I mess it up. Sometimes I don't get the details right. Some, sometimes I don't say it uh, the right way. Sometimes I get a little bit too emotional. Sometimes I'm not emotional enough and it might come out too harsh. It might come out too hard. Sometimes it might come out like I'm bragging. Sometimes it might come out like I'm insecure. I have all of these flaws. And the biggest flaw was just that I just didn't want to be in front of people. You can call it insecurity. You can call it a uh, uh, fear of judgment. Um, you can call it a uh, uh, fear of uh, failure. You can call it uh, just me being an introvert and having to be an extrovert because of the call on my life, whatever you want to call it. But here's the thing. This is where God met me. God revealed to me that the very thing that I considered a flaw was the same reason why he wanted to use me in the first place. I'm gonna give you. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that set in for a minute. <clears throat> the very reason I did not want to do it is almost the same exact reason why God needed me to do it. Essentially, what He showed me was the fact that you don't want to do it, the fact that you understand and that you recognize and that you admit that you do have flaws and that you don't want anybody to see them. That's the reason why I want to use you because you're not going to be dependent on yourself. And the fact that you don't want to be there means that you're going to be humble when I put you out there because you didn't want to do it in the first place. And so he's saying that I can trust you to do it because you're not going to boast in your own strength. You're not going to boast in your knowledge. You're not going to boast in your understanding. You're not going to boast in your degree. You're not going to boast in your followers. You're not going to boast in how many friends you got. You're not going to boast in how many likes you got. You're not going to boast in anything that happens on that platform. Because your only boasting is in your flaws and in your infirmities. I got to give it balance tonight, y'all. This is not this is not a message of me telling you to beat yourself up. This is not a message uh, of, of you having low self-esteem. This is what I'm saying. I am boasting in the fact that I would fall flat on my face had it not been for the grace of God. Not just had it not been as in past tense. If it were not for the grace of God in his hand on my life right now, I would fall flat on my face. We have all been given a measure. A measure, a measure of, of, of grace that he has given us to operate within the sphere of, of, of his grace. And he's saying that as long as you operate within the sphere of grace that I've given you, then my grace will be sufficient in every situation. I don't care if it doesn't feel like it. I don't care if it doesn't look like it. I don't care if I'm in my emotions. I don't care if I'm in my feelings. God, I am boasting in the fact that I'm emotional. Yeah, you heard it right. I'm, I'm boasting in the fact that sometimes I can be insecure. I'm boasting in the fact that sometimes I still fumble and triple over my words and I still stutter. I'm boasting over the fact that sometimes I still mess up scripture. I'm boasting over the fact that I don't got too many friends. I'm boasting over the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm scared sometimes when I have to talk to strangers out in public about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm boasting in the fact that sometimes I don't have the right words to say. I boast in that. Because when I boast in my weakness, that's when I'm strong. I'm strong because he is then made strong. Then he comes to the forefront once I back up. Less of me, more of you. That's where that comes into play. When I recognize my insufficiency, that's when his sufficiency is able to take over. That's when his grace is able to grab the wheel. Jesus, God, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to end on that note tonight. I believe that I've shared what I believe that God has given me to share with y'all tonight. Man, listen, I know y'all know some people that need to hear this. It's not too late to hit that share button. It's not too late to tag somebody in the comments. Or maybe even once this is finished, somebody may be watching this at a later date, whenever, whatever it is, tell somebody about this because I know that this is going to encourage a lot of people who are feeling condemnation because they're angry. Maybe some of you streaming tonight, you might be feeling bad because you're like, oh man, I, I, I was all the way in my emotions and I feel like I'm less of a Christian because of it. I feel like, you know, last night I said some choice words and now I don't quite feel as spiritual as I used to feel because I let it get the best of me. Last week we were talking about Peter. Y'all know Peter was a cusser, right? Um, y'all know Peter probably would have murdered somebody if his aim wasn't a little bit off. I'm pretty sure he wasn't aiming for the ear. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. God's grace is sufficient. But his grace is sufficient with the measure that he has given you. And that measure is giving according to even your understanding of your knowledge of your insufficiencies and your flaws. Acknowledging the fact that, God, I got this thorn in my flesh. But, God, I'm giving you my word tonight before I pray for y'all tonight and we finish. I believe some people on this line tonight and maybe watching this at a later date. You say, God, I'm acknowledging this thorn in my flesh. I'm no longer turning a blind eye to it. I'm no longer acting like it doesn't exist. But I'm acknowledging this thorn in my flesh. And as a result of me acknowledging it, God, I'm giving you permission to let your grace run loose. I receive the measure of grace that you've given me. Your sufficiency. God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Glory to God. Let's get ready to pray. I want to pray for y'all tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for each individual on this stream. Father, I thank you. Whew, man. Somebody's heart is heavy, Lord. It's heavy. It's leaking. It's dripping. <clears throat> and this just ain't one of those pats of jobs. This ain't just something you can just stick a Band-Aid over. <clears throat> this is not something you can just sleep on and wake up in the morning and hope it all just goes away. Father, but I thank you that tonight, that your grace, your sufficiency, that you're injecting, that you're exerting your holy nature, your holy influence, into somebody's heart and somebody's situation today. God, your grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. And your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Father, so we acknowledge those areas. We acknowledge those hidden places. We acknowledge those flaws. We acknowledge our feelings, our emotions. And we put them on the table before you no longer hiding them behind our back, trying to be a super Christian or super spiritual, or like Paul said, for us to be exalted above this measure of grace that you have given us. But God, help us to stay right in that sweet spot, right within that measure of grace that you have given us to thrive. And even right now, Father, I repent and I lead us even in repentance, God. If there's anything that we have done, that we have felt, said, anything that we have thought, Maybe that even the thoughts that we've maybe even entertained that we know wasn't you, Father. We ask you to forgive us tonight. We ask you to purify our hearts. I thank you for your grace. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Your grace being us not deserving your goodness, but you giving it to us anyway. I thank you for your mercy. Us deserving a penalty, but you not giving it to us. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, that even tonight you're opening somebody's eyes to reveal and to see their measure of grace. And to know the areas that you have ordained 
to open up their eyes to see your grace at work in their lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Woo!